Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you all for uh, for joining the day. Um, looks like we have a, a few people uh, still joining, but um, I will go ahead and get started um, so uh, we can get into the presentation. Uh, so um, give me one second to get my screen shared. Okay. All right. So yeah, again, thank you all for joining today. Uh, so the, the purpose of today's webinar is going to be to cover uh, the uh, new products that uh, OGI Terry is, is now offering. Um, and these are going to be focused around fuel gas treatment systems. Uh, so it's a, a general category, but we'll get into some of the specific um, uh, products that we're now offering. Um, so uh, first, if you're not familiar with uh, OGI, I'll give you a, a brief overview of us and, and the company. Um, so OGI stands for oil, gas, and industrial. Um, we, uh, those are the industries that we serve in. Um, and uh, we do offer several different uh, options within those. Um, we, of course, offer the, the Terry brand, which is going to be the focus of the presentation today. But we also offer another type of uh, uh, direct fired water heater called the Quick Water. And then we have our control brands, which is the um, Total Arc uh, Relighter and BMS. Um, we serve several different industries. Uh, the most obvious is going to be natural gas for today's presentation, uh, but we're also in several other, um, such as the concrete, commercial, car wash, um, and many other manufacturing industries. Um, and we're proud to be a certified women-owned business. Uh, we've been a part of the Women's uh, Business Enterprise National Council for uh, several years now, so honored to be a part of them. And uh, we've been in business for just a little over 31 years now, so um and and some exciting news which has actually just happened uh in the last uh couple of weeks um we were recently announced uh, the manufacturer of the year for the state of oklahoma um we actually were awarded the manufacturer of tulsa recently and then uh, we're given this honor um here in the past few weeks so um, there's a little over 4200 manufacturers in oklahoma so it's it's a great honor to uh, be recognized with that and um, we hope to uh to keep up uh, that uh as we move forward um, and I do want, um, for the purpose of the presentation and kind of how we'll tie everything in at the end, just briefly go over our facilities and, and capabilities. Um, so uh, some of you may have seen this before, but uh, we do have a 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility. Um, we, we do our own, we cut our own material, um, own painting. We have a UL listed panel shop. Um, and, and all of this is to say is that, you know, everything we do start to finish is, is done here on site. At our facility, um, we have a full engineering staff, uh, nine engineers total. It's a mix of mechanical and electrical engineers, um, and then we also have a 24/7 uh, field support. Um, so that's made up of field technicians who are, you know, typically out on the road on site, um, and then we've got uh, in-office engineer support as well. So um, that's uh, that's available to you 24/7. And is a, a really great advantage uh, to to our product line and, and going with the OGI Terry brand. Okay, so with that, we'll get into uh, the, the focus of today's presentation, and I'll give you a brief overview. So, as I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on fuel treatment systems, um, and that's of course going to be natural gas systems. Uh, filter systems will be the first thing we'll cover. Uh, then we'll cover our regulating systems. And then finally, we'll cover the uh, the Terry Electric, um, which is is one of the uh, newer products. There's not really anything else out in the field like that. Uh, so we're really excited to talk to you more about that and then tell you some of the features there. Uh, so we'll first get started with the uh, the natural gas filter systems. Uh, if, if you're not familiar, um, the purpose of these filter systems is to remove water, oil, particulates um, from high pressure gas streams. Um, we do have coalescent and particular filter configurations, um, and this can be done in, you know, a simple single stage, um, you know, filter sump assembly, or we can get into even the more complex systems. Um, and I'll kind of, as we get into these, I'll walk you through some of those different systems and, and, and what those will look like. Um, and uh, the, our, our natural gas filter systems are able to meet uh, the demands of local distribution systems. Um, it, up to your complex supply systems uh, in the power generation area. Um, and we do follow many of the ASME uh, B31.1, 0.3, um, and API 1104 standards with these. So, uh, you know, everything we're doing is, is right in line with the Terry brand. We're focusing on being industry compliant, following all the standards that are required. 
um, to get you a complete system that it will meet you know any of your AMLs or anything like that that you already have in place. Um, so I, I'll first talk about some of the features uh, that we have on these systems um, and um, <clears throat> what you'll see here um, is the, uh, as I mentioned, some of the uh, ASME standards that we are follow following. Uh, we do offer both horizontal and vertical orientations with these filtering systems. So um, as we all are becoming more and more, more aware, especially in these power generation um, plants, uh, you know, uh, real estate is becoming a premium. And so having that capability to go to a vertical orientation is a, a big plus um, for, for this configuration. We'll also offer condensation sumps um, to go with uh, these, these filtering systems. And then um, here, just kind of a brief explanation of our filter performance. Um, you know, anything uh, particularly that's over uh, equal to or greater than five microns, uh, we can get 100% of those. Um, and then anything uh, greater or equal to 0.3 microns, we're getting 99.5% of. So it's a very good solution to uh, capture some of those uh, particulates and, and anything else that you might have in your system. Um, and then some of our options, uh, these are just a few that I want to highlight. Again, you know, I, I want to reiterate that, you know, we are a custom engineered facility and anything that, you know, you need us to meet, uh, we're capable of doing that. Uh, so, um, you know, just some of the highlights, uh, I mentioned earlier, the, this, you know, automatic filter and separator sump valves. Um, we do have a tri-stop valve system that we can offer. It's in compliance with ASME B31.1. Um, and then, uh, you know, something that I think is a really great option is the remote monitoring. You know, this allows you to know, you know, anything you want. We've, we've got, you know, really many possibilities of what we can do there to allow you to, you know, keep a close eye and monitor what's going on with your system without actually being there on site. Um, and then we've also got the, uh, the filter bypass option um, that uh, is in compliance with those ASME um, and API standards that I discussed earlier. <clears throat> so uh, next we'll, uh, we'll take a quick look at uh, just kind of a, a basic filter system. So um, this is going to be really the most simple system you'll see, um, just very straightforward. Um, you've got some, some level switches, level gauges, um, you know, just uh, pretty basic and straightforward. This would be one of the more simple, um, you know, setups you would see from us. Um, as I mentioned, we do provide that optional bypass. So um, you can add in this bypass if you do ever want to go around the filtering system. Um, you know, for from a cost perspective, it, you know, I, I would probably think you would most often have this. Um, it's it's going to be beneficial and, and uh, you know, it, it's not going to, you know, really sway your price one way or the other. So it makes a lot of sense to have that in place. Uh, so now getting to a little bit more complex option um, and still staying in that, that vertical configuration, but we still got your basic filtering system with your level switches and gauges. Um, but now we're adding in this, um, <clears throat> this uh, sump here um, to allow you some, some, some additional support um, from a collection perspective. Um, and so uh, this would be, you know, another option you would see um, in a, uh, in your filtering system. <clears throat> so next we get into uh, just the horizontal filter system. Uh, you know, this, this is basically going to be very similar to that vertical that we just discussed. You've got a few more features, but um, you know, this, this is probably more what we're all used to seeing. Um, it's uh, these verticals or these, excuse me, horizontal systems are, are what's typically seen in the field. Um, you still have all the same features. You've just got that little bit larger footprint. So, um, certainly no, no negatives to this, but you know, it, when you do need that, um, added, uh, added space, we, it's nice to have that vertical option over this horizontal option that we see here. <clears throat> uh, so next we'll get into the, uh, the natural gas regulating systems. Um, so this is, um, you know, going to provide reliable performance to suit your pressure and flow requirements. Uh, these are typically going to be seen at, um, you know, maybe a city gate station or a combustion turbine fuel gas supply. Um, <clears throat> it's a um, in-plant fuel gas distribution and power generation. So lots of different applications this could be found in. Um, and it's a, um, <clears throat> you know, a good solution for, for many different applications. 
Um, and uh, Jonathan, you actually asked a very timely question there because the next thing I was going to talk about is, uh, so yeah, all, our filtration design um, and fabrication along with our regulations, gas systems, um, all of that is going to be done um, here on site. Uh, our, our mechanical engineers are actually the ones doing all the design work. Um, and then we've got a drafting department that will, you know, build up all the models, make sure all of our layouts are correct. Um, and then it just goes straight, you know, I can see the manufacturing facility out my window right here and it, it goes in into manufacturing right there. So everything we do is, is done ourselves. Um, you know, the only thing we outsource is, is our insulation, which, you know, is only going to really apply to the heaters. Um, but that's even done in-house in our facility. So we're able to, you know, even, even those guys were keeping a, an eye on as they're working through that. So. Um, it's it's a really nice feature to have that you know we can be hands on on everything and, and keeping a close watch on what's going on. Um, and and the last thing <clears throat> to add to that is, you know, on top of manufacturing ourselves, everything we do is going to be tested before it leaves our facility. So um, our heaters, uh, any any type of regulation skids, you know, we'll we'll make sure they are fully tested and all the safeties are confirmed prior to leaving. Um, our manufacturing facility so that there's no surprises once we get on to the field to if, if we're doing startup or you're doing startup um, we, we're confident of what you're going to have uh, arrive on site. So we'll get into uh, again some of the features and options of the uh, the regulating systems um, you know again we're following all those same uh, API and ASME standards uh, you know, just some notable features on this regulation system. Um, we're able to accommodate up to 1400 PSI um, for your inlet pressure. Um, and then our outlet pressure is gonna be um, 50 PSI, anywhere from 50 PSI to 1100 PSI. So, um, you know, we've got a really large range of what we can cover there uh, for the regulate, regulating systems. Um, and uh, so, so again, some options I wanna highlight. Um, and, and just to remind you again, these are just a few that I highlight. We can, of course, cover anything that you feel necessary or, or is a requirement for your specific location. Um, this is also going to come with um, a remote monitoring, op remote monitoring option. So um, here we list just, you know, an example of a few of the things that we can monitor through that system, um, which, you know, again, save you time. Uh, you can monitor from many different locations and you don't have to be out actually putting your hands on the heater. Um, and we do offer, uh, which I'll get into this on the next slide, but a, a tandem worker monitor and two-stage flow pressure control valves. Um, so, it, you know, as we all are aware, you know, safety is becoming, it's always been a priority, but more and more focusing on that, on the design of our heaters and regulation skids. So having in that worker monitor set up um, and, and, you know, different control valves and relief valves um, is a priority and it's something we focus on, on, on all these designs. And with that, we'll get into uh, just a, an overview of uh, kind of a, a just a simple PNID. Um, this is just going to be, you know, kind of just a linear across of, of you know, four different sections. Um, so starting with the most basic, uh, we've got our high pressure supply gas coming in here and then our regulation pressure coming out here. So um, from the most basic perspective, this is what you would see. Um, you've got your regulation options and your relief and indication options. So um, we just have a single stage regulator in this setup, and then we've got 100% capacity to re relief, and then your pressure indicator before your, your regulated gas is, is through the system. Uh, so going kind of a level higher on that, um, here you see a filter come into play on the regulating system, and then on our regulation options, we've added in the worker monitor. So um, this is that additional you know, safety we had discussed, and then of course, we've got that PRV uh, relief valve uh, leakage relief um, and indication um, before we are out to that regulated pressure. Um, and then just kind of continuing on, getting more and more advanced. So still have our filter in place, um, but now we have that worker monitor, monitor fuel gas pressure control valve tied in. So we're actually monitoring our relief and indication options downstream, um, communicating back to our regulation. Uh, to add in some additional um, regulation and safeties before we're into that relief option. And then lastly, getting into, you know, really the most advanced option you would see um, for any complex situations in a regulating system. Uh, so this one is going to have that trip stop valve assembly built in. And as you can see, that's uh, communicating all the way down here to our, our relief valve um, 
And so uh, we're able to have that emergency option built in there. So if you're ever in a situation where you're seeing too high of a pressures downstream um, before you're getting to what should be your regulated gas, we can catch that early on um, rather than see any errors too far downstream. Um, we're still utilizing the worker monitor setup here, um, but you know this this is a really great solution to to cover all your safety standpoints um, and, and make sure that there's no no issues uh, when when utilizing this system. Okay, and so with that, we'll go into our um, our final um, new product here, which is the Terry Electric heater. Uh, so I, I think you know I can say for myself and everyone else here at OGI, we're we're very excited about this product. Excited to you know bring it into the market and and you know give you guys some more um, information on it. So um, you know the, the great thing about this electric heater um, in comparison to some of our uh, natural gas fired heaters. Is that it combines a high turndown and rapid response to any instantaneous changes in load. So um, we're able to accomplish that because in in the majority of cases our electric heaters are going to be direct fired rather than indirect fired. Um, so that's really an offering that we've never had with at OGI before. Um, so because of utilizing that electric heat, um, which is going to be an instantaneous response, and then being direct fired, um, we have a lot more uh, rapid response to to any changes in load where we would have with the indirect fired water bath heater um, you know we commonly are, are quoting these um, and, and using these in power generation facilities um, or or in a natural gas dew points uh, for supplemental heater um, that's because supplemental heating excuse me uh, that's because of their high output capability and, and low pressure drop. And, and this is all packaged into a very small footprint. You know, that's that's a definitely a big highlight, um, kind of going back to those those vertical filters. Um, we're able to utilize, you know, minimal space and with maximum heat input um, just because of, you know, there's a lot less required for these electric heaters than what you would see on a, on a natural gas fired heater. Um, and uh, for these, you know, at the our current design, our, our power input ranges anyone, anywhere from five kilowatts to one megawatt. Um, so th these are most suitable for small to moderate gas flow ranges. You know, once we get into something that's outside of that uh, one megawatt range, that's really when we you, you have to get into the um, the uh, natural gas fired uh, heaters. You know, that you, you run into with electric, obviously you run into a certain point where you just can't get enough heat. Uh, or input into that. So depending on your gas flows, um, you know, if we're talking really high flow rates, you know, you do have a limitation there. But you know, for a majority of, of situations, especially in power gen facilities, the electric heater is a really great option. Um, <clears throat> and another, you know, big highlight of these, because they are um, for the most part going to be direct fired, um, you have no fluids or anything like that that you have to worry about with an indirect fired. So you know, you can you can place these anywhere within the gas supply system with no impacts, uh, no environmental impacts. That is, so um, that's a definite plus of the electric heater. Um, so just continuing on, talking a little bit more about uh, some of the features that we have here. Um, <clears throat> like all of our um, our heaters, we're we're going to have uh, you know it's going to be stamped here. Um, in the shop, uh, you, you stamped a heater shell and electric element uh, design conditions up to uh, 1,360 PSIG at 200 degrees F. Um, and as I mentioned, we do have a direct and indirect fired option. Um, really, the only time that we're going to get into the indirect fired option would be if you, um, you know, or maybe um, in a situation where you have a really low flow. We were working on a project recently where, um, you know, it, the request was for a indirect fired natural gas heater, or excuse me, indirect heated natural gas heater. Um, but you know what we found is that the flow was so low that you know the duty of the heater was was going to be you know basically the same as a pilot. And so what we did was go to an indirect fired electric heater. So um, that's that's a good option when maybe you get to you know some of those flows that are you know too big for a catalytic heater but too small for a, a natural gas fired heater. Um, that's when we can use that indirect fired op option. But you know, for typical applications, we're going to see most of these as direct fired. Um, and for the power input options, um, it's going to ultimately be dependent on the heater duty, but it's either going to be three phase or one phase, and it'll be 480 or 240 on your on your power supply. So 
Um, that, you know, is one caveat. I'm sure everyone's aware of that, but you do obviously need power for these. These aren't going to be, you know, applicable for remote locations or anything like that. <laughs> um, and again, just some of the options to highlight. Um, <clears throat> we do have uh, remote monitoring again with these. So, <clears throat> excuse me, like all of our other options, uh, you can utilize that remote monitoring uh, to, to keep an eye on this heater. Um, and then the heater power and control panel will also uh, can also be remote mounted if, if you desire. So we have that option. And then again, we have the bypass and isolation valve option that you can build in with, uh, with this heater as well. <clears throat> so here we just have a uh, kind of basic uh, piping and instrumentation, instru instrumentation diagram to, uh, to run through. So as I mentioned, you've got your heater control panel here. Um, that uh, can be uh, can be customer remote input and monitoring. So um, that's an option. We we do that on all of our heaters, but um, especially you know for the electric heater, if you're in a power generation plant, um, that's a really great option to have. Um, and you know, other than that, you know, really everything you see here is going to be um, pretty similar to most of our piping and instrumentation diagrams on our heaters. Um, we have all of our you know normal um, outlet um, temperature um monitoring so we'll, we'll have all of that downstream um you know here uh, on our heater elements um we do have also the, the added um uh thermocouples there to monitor the coil itself so um, that gives us a lot better clarity on on what's going on with the heater and communication back to this control panel um to to give us you know that um, instantaneous um response to changes in loads that, that i discussed earlier Okay, so um, reviewing all those products, you know, um, the, the thing I want to focus on is, is the OGI solution. So, you know, as we mentioned, these, these are going to be applications to contribute to our, our dew point and fuel gas heater products. So the products we've been offering for, you know, the past 31 plus years um, are the fuel gas heater, you know, whether those be, whether those be natural gas, uh, natural draft, excuse me, or forced draft. Um, we've got all those options, but now we're adding in the natural gas filter system, the natural gas regulation, and the uh, the Terry Electric heater. And so those make up those three products make up the new products that we're offering. And so you know I, I think it goes without saying the the filter systems and the regulation systems. You know we're we're really not redesigning the wheel there by by any means. Um, the Terry Electric you know is going to be something new to the in, newer to the industry, um, but you know. The, the thing that um, is to me is the big plus and what I really want to, you know, bring to your attention is that, you know, we can now offer you a complete system in a single purchase order. So, you know, in the past, you might have to go get a heater from us and then go to a different vendor to get uh, your, your filter system or your regulation system. But now we're able to offer, you know, everything you need to cover, you know, upstream and downstream of your system uh, to, to make sure, you know, all of your paint systems are going to match. You don't have to worry about, you know, fitting things up. Um, everything's covered under a single warranty. Um, it's it's just going to be, you know, it allows to be a complete solution for, for you know, your specific projects, um, which you know is something really exciting uh, in my mind, and we're happy to to be an offering that because it's it's going to make you know, it, for the engineers, the field guys purchasing uh, across the board, it's just going to make things a, a lot simpler. Um, and again, just to, to, to remind you, you know, everything we do is custom engineered. Um, you know, we don't have anything that I can go out there and pull off the shelf, uh, you know, from the quote phase, uh, we have an application engineer assigned to your project that's designing it from scratch to your specific needs. Um, it's, it's not a, you know, mix and stir type of situation. It's, it's highly engineered and custom for your specific uh, design. And that's how we've always done our heaters. And that's how we'll continue to do our filter systems and regulation systems. Um, and, and again, to go along with that, for, for all of these existing products and new products, we have our 24-7 engineering and services support. Um, so they're available to help you on any of this. We've got guys in the field uh, that can help you with startup or, you know, if you need troubleshooting, preventative maintenance, anything like that, we're, we're able to, uh, to be on site to help. And finally, just again, to highlight the Terry Electric, um, I, I think I've said enough, but we're all really excited about that one here at, uh, at OGI because it's, it's going to be a great solution to some of the, the more complex requirements 
um, we're seeing in the field now, it's, you know, most of all, it's, it's going to have zero operating emissions. So as we see more and more regulations coming from the EPA, or maybe if you're moving into, uh, you know, needing this in an, a location that, you know, maybe has strict requirements, we're, we're able to meet those zero operating emissions, um, which is, you know, uh, for the most part, unheard of in, in some of the heat outputs we're able to achieve. Um, and again, the direct fired um, feature, again, something OGI has not offered in the past, but um, is just giving a lot more capability and flexibility with these heaters to, uh, to be able to uh, add some additional performance to our Terry Electric line. Um, and finally, the, uh, the small footprint, which is, is going to be great um, as real estate is getting tighter and tighter in, in some of these locations. Um, we're able to fit, you know, whatever you might need into, into a small area. Um, to, to give you the most, you know, um, heat input and output for, for a limited location. So with that, um, thank you all for, for joining. Um, and um, I'll open it up for questions now. Um, and we'll get into answering some of these. So, um, all right. So we have a question here. Um, is the electric element in direct contact or a dry well? Uh, so, uh, yeah, for, uh, the direct fired, it will be in a direct contact. Um, that's why you, you see that we have some of those, um, those, those, uh, thermocouples to monitor the actual temperature of the element itself to provide us some more control. Um, so, uh, for the direct contact aspect, it, it, or direct fired, excuse me, it will be in direct contact. I'll, I'll give you all just a, a few minutes here. If you have any questions, um, feel, feel free to ask and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get those answered. Uh, maybe just a few more seconds here for some more questions. If you guys have anything, um, of course, I've got my uh, <clears throat> I've got my uh, contact information here, so um, I'm uh, I'm happy to get on a call, Teams call, um, or uh, you know, we we do provide some Terry Universities as well, so we can come do on-site training on on all of our products and and uh, from you know from a technical perspective, from engineers to um, to technical personnel, it's, it's a really great option. We're, we're happy to come outside or virtual lunch and learns, whatever, whatever you like, we're, we're happy to help with any of that. Um, so, um, <clears throat> got another question, a couple more questions here coming in. So, um, can you please restate the heat input breakover where electric heat is no longer cost effective? Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it's so much, uh, from a cost, um, you know, effectiveness it's you know really we get into uh, as far as cost goes we're really not going to see a large difference um between the the two types of heaters where where we're really going to see um that come into play is is when we get into um some of those higher um gas flows so um jonathan that's you know i, I said it was five kilowatt to one megawatt um is the the power input and if i'm remembering right that's roughly a little over 300,000 um, uh, BTU per hour on your duty. So, um, you know, in terms of gas flow, there's obviously a lot of things that play into that. So it's hard to say for certain, but, you know, just to keep in mind, you know, if you're looking at duties over 300,000, um, you know, that's when, you know, it, it's good to take um, take a second look at, you know, what's what you're able to use there. Um, you know, I will say if, you know, that's, that's the great thing about having our, you know, our full engineering staff and I'm actually an engineer as well. I started in our engineering department. And so that's something I can, you know, help you with, you know, upfront, you know, we can just have that conversation like, Hey, I've, I've got this heater. It's just a little over 300,000. I'd really like to use an electric heater. Um, but is that possible? And, you know, we can just do some quick calculations, take a look at that to see if, you know, with all your different process conditions, if that's something we're able to, uh, to meet. So um we uh we can definitely help you there but uh but yeah i think that that 300,000 btu is the kind of the number to keep in your head if when you're you know thinking about these just maybe specking out a new project um 
And then, uh, so yes, uh, we have a question about if uh, literature will be available. So um, we are uh, going to be releasing literature here in the, the coming few weeks. Um, we're just finalizing that um, with some of the graphics and things like that. So um, you'll, you'll have that. So you'll have some of that uh, information you can have on hand and, and you're able to share that. Um, you know, with with maybe some of your um, you know colleagues or different things like that. So we will be releasing that, and that you can that can all be found on our website. Um, so uh, you'll find that uh, under the Terry Brand um, link on our website uh, once those are released. Um, okay, so. Um, I think that's right at uh, 30 minutes uh, for the presentation. So, um, with that, I will um, I will let everyone go today. Again, um, my uh, my contact information is available to all of you here, um, and we'll sh I will share this webinar um, with you all, so um, you can reference everything on here as, as well as my contact information. So, um, thank you all again for attending today. Um, Really excited about these products and look forward to hopefully working on some some projects with you all on these. So um, hope everyone has a great day. Thanks.